Yeah, back on the Sports Max Zone now, and we saddle up for a discussion on the sport of King's horse racing, a name that rings bells around the horse racing fraternity, a third-generation horseman, Safi Joseph Jr., Florida-based now, but originally from Barbados, just days after completing a remarkable ninth consecutive trainers' championship triumph at Florida's Gulfstream Park, Joseph kicked off the new season on Thursday with a double on the opening day of the spring summer meet in the 60,000 US dollar maiden special weight fourth race on Thursday. His four year old filly Divine won with Edwin Gonzalez aboard as a three to two favorite. Then Safi completed the double with the two to one bet Imonra in the 62,000 US dollar allowance optional claiming sixth race with Paco Lopez aboard. Well, it's a pleasure now to welcome to the show Safi Joseph Jr., who joins us to talk some horse racing. Safi, are you there? Three, four, five. I think we were just uh, setting up the connection. So we'll talk to him in a very short while there, um, uh, Mariah. But, but, but we know that um, he has been a staple on the At The Track show because um, mm. he does so well that almost every week, he Safi has Joseph to be on. Has, a, has a segment <laughs> on, on At The Track. Yeah, and he has already won 62 races this year in the USA, Lance, and that speaks for itself. The numbers speak for itself. The quality of Safi Joseph Jr. I was asking you today, you know, about the involvement of his family. And, and your response, I think, summed it up for me so well that he comes from a family that, of course, is bred and born in horse racing so it's as if it was already chosen yeah. i don't think he could have avoided it from he was a a small child his entire family his dad was a owner his well his dad was a trainer and owner his grandfather was a racehorse owner as well Safi joseph jr welcome to the sports max zone great to have you on sir thanks for having me on nice to see you all yeah our, i know we had spoken to you about two years ago when you were preparing white abario for the kentucky derby a lot has happened since that including um continuing to be the gulfstream park champion trainer and you closed off your third consecutive gulfstream park championship meet season as a as a title winner um how satisfying has the past season gone for you i mean well it's been as good as we could ask obviously we had a um a uh, big setback last year in May and at Churchill Downs, and we didn't let it interfere with us. So the team stuck together. It was, it was um, had to dig deep, and the owner supported us, and we kept going strong. So it, it's it's been very gratifying to, to to overcome adversity and and to keep our level of high standard of success. Yeah, I just to go back for the sake of the viewers who, who may not catch on to exactly what you were saying. You had a couple of horses at Churchill Downs for the Kentucky Derby last year and a couple of deaths with uh, not only your stable, but others as well. And uh, you were temporarily banned. Um, was there any any thought of, of challenging those decisions legally? Because as it turned out, um, it does appear from our end that they were uh, they were unjustified decisions against you. Yeah, I mean, you just let the truth play out. And in the end, the truth's always going to play out. And um, that, that that's what exactly happened. And it, it cleared us. And um, we continue on strong. I, I always believe that the best um, justice is, is is success and, and, and showing it and, and, and doing things the right way. And, and that's what we strive for. And that's what we continue to do. Yeah. Your championship Gulfstream Park win in this past uh, December through to, to, to late March, Safi, was probably more satisfying for you than the other titles that you had won because um, Todd Pletcher is an eight-time Eclipse Award winner as the USA's number one trainer. And uh, when you started defeating him at Gulfstream Park, I think it had broken probably a 17-season sequence that he had, he had won. And uh, you almost doubled him in wins this past season. Was this championship season success for you the, the most satisfying of all? Yeah, you would say so. I mean, as I said, in the previous championship meets, it's been a very close race up to like probably the last few weeks. And this time we, um, everything went to um, as, as good as we could ask. We had a, we had a great season. We, we, and we were probably 30 wins clear of him. So gr growing up watching him um, win all the races, it, it's it's um, gratifying to someone that you, you looked up to. And now you're competing with him and not only competing with him, but, but basically at, uh, on top of him at, at this meet. So it's, it's, it's a dream come true. And God blesses us with all the success, and we just continue to try to get better. Yeah, and we're, we're just looking at one of the two races that you won on Thursday, Safi. So the new spring-summer meet has started, and you've already started off with a double. 
and uh, setting the pace for another championship win, which would be your 10th in a row. Very, very impressive. We're proud of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, in, in this game, you got to stay relevant. It's, it's everything that's happened is, is, is you can't really enjoy it too much because there's always someone trying to, <laughs> to take your spot. So you got to continue on. Yeah, I, I know that we'd uh, spoken to you about this when we spoke to you back in 2022 about the meteoric rise that you have experienced since you've gone to Florida. Because back in 2009, when your horse, Are You Talking to Me, won the Triple Crown in Barbados, um, it was a brave move for you to leave Barbados at that point to take on the Florida experience. But, you know, it, it, it is very clear that it was a challenge that you, you gave yourself. And uh, it's pretty clear, I don't even ask, have to ask, that uh, no regrets in leaving Barbados, is, are they? No, I mean, the way, the way it's worked out, absolutely not. Um, looking back on it and how it went early, in the early stages, <laughs> there, there was doubt uh, after a few years if we were going to break through and there was doubt um, if we were ever going to get the chances. You, you need to get the chances in this game and unless the owners support you as a trainer, you, you you can't do it. There's no two ways about it. I mean, you need horses to train and the owners are the ones who have the horses. So we, we finally started to get the opportunities and it, it came through and we made the most of them and there was a point that where, where you, you feel like you're not going to make breakthrough on um, it's almost like you you, you want to turn back and that that's the point when things actually happen so anybody kind of coming through the ranks is the same thing just stay strong keep tr keep trying never give up and things will happen and safi you say that and all i can think about asking you is you know what really keeps you motivated because you've been so successful lan said it when we were discussing before you joined us Every time he does at the track, we have to talk about you because you pick up successes, you know, everywhere. And it's it's just evident that you're doing such a great job. What keeps you motivated despite the setbacks that happen from time to time? I mean, you just you just want to get better. It's your, it's your passion. It's, it's I, I love this. So like, it, it, yeah, it's my job, but I don't look at it as a job. I look at it as as, as if if it's, it's almost like a hobby and. This is what I rather do. Somebody might rather go to the beach, or somebody might rather go to the barn with the horses. And it, it, I feel like I'm part of them. Um, and you just, you, 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 the, when you have a passion for something, it's it, 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 it's easy to do. Put it that way. Yeah, there are days that um, are, are, are that there's a lot of highs and lows in this sport, and the lows are really, really low, and the highs are are high, and it's kind of not much in between. So you have to be the balancer to not get too high and. When it's low, you just got to dig deep and, and know there's going to be better days ahead. And Safi, just looking on on what's taking place throughout the Caribbean, are you pleased with the state of horse racing in the Caribbean? Yeah, I mean, I think Jamaica has obviously done a great job. They're, they're, they're definitely the leaders in the Caribbean. And I see the racing on, on, on the simulcast at Gulfstream. I look up at the screen and it looks just like any um, track in America. So... Kudos to what they're doing in Jamaica and obviously putting on the race. Um, Barbados, my, my, where I'm from, uh, it, the racing has stayed steady during COVID. And COVID obviously set back Trinidad um, very badly. And it's it's kind of um, basically, is, is it ever going to recover? It's hard to say. It definitely needs some government support. And without that, it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't look good. So I think Jamaica is, is leading the way as far as the, the way they're handling things. And, and they run a very great product on um, Barbados as I said it's been pretty consistent um doesn't run as often as Jamaica but produce great horsemen on um, Guyana they haven't they, they, they obviously have racing going on now but it's not as it's not recognized yet and I think that's a path that they need to get their racing recognized with with a jockey club and, and so on a stud book before they, they get to the next level but there's potential on um, Jamaica's leading the way in the standard of, of, of how they do things yeah, and, and Safi, I know that you had a couple of Kentucky Derby entries. You had a third place finish with Skippy Long stocking in the Belmont Stakes. I saw your catalytic finish second in the Florida Derby a couple of weeks ago. Um, is there any chance that that horse may make it to the Kentucky Derby next month? Yeah, he, well, he has enough 50 points right now. It looks like it's going gonna, it's gonna to get him in a Derby. So I'll be on well. I'm speaking with the ownership group. That's going to be the plan. We're going to train him towards the Derby and... If everything goes good, he, 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 will, he will ship for the Derby. Okay, well, uh, Safi, always great talking to you on the Sports Max Zone. We want to uh, continue giving you all the congratulations on the successes you've been having. Currently, uh, top 10 trainer in all of North America. And uh, there's been no time in Caribbean history 
that we have had a trainer uh, get the successes that you have been having in, in North America. So continue blazing the trail, brother, and uh, we'll continue to cover your excellent work in Florida. Take care. Well, thank you very much. I just want to say thanks to the whole Caribbean and uh, the support that everyone gives us. It's, 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 it's hard, hard to believe um, how everyone's jumped on the ship and like giving us the support. So I, I, I'm thankful for all that support. It means a lot. Yeah, great. Safi Joseph Jr. there, nine times in a row, uh, seasonal champion trainer in Florida. But he had won four titles before that, so 13 titles overall, and um, continuing to do really, really well. Uh, over 1,000 wins in the USA now since he went there in 2011. And we'll be back with more on the Sportsman Zone after this.